This is Kristen Mays Beatty with her week five assignment for SPED 772. This week we had an article um, about determining paraprofessional support in the classroom or paraeducator support in the classroom. It's funny that this one came up because at the beginning of the year we do have a problem with enough para support, enough special ed support. At my grade level, the special ed teacher is involved in seven classrooms. So then paraeducators are very important in our classroom. On the um, chart we were walk working through, um, we went through the checklist and I used two different students. On the piece of paper, you can see a lighter blue. That blue is for a student who was identified and attended our early childhood program in the district. We worked through it and he was, our highest need student coming from there. You'll see later on, I have our students on another page and their needs are nowhere near what they were when they started early childhood. So the markings for the child who was in EC are in the light blue. Then after having a discussion about how well the children who came from EC were doing, we started talking about the newcomers into our classroom who have never been in a school experience before that we know of. Maybe there was some daycare, maybe there was some preschool, but what we know is some of them came in with higher needs than the children who are identified with special needs for an early childhood program. And you'll see on the right side, the darker blue, where we have a student who is working on a lot of skills. She cries about a lot of things. She doesn't generalize things. She needs repeated modeled behavior. I think this is still the placement for her. I'm just concerned that she may take more of her time and may need special ed support. So that's what we started with, which led to larger discussions. And here I have the children that we were talking about, and I used the checklist one through nine to talk about our friends that we had some concerns about. Without breaking too much confidentiality, I'll just use their first names. Um, on the left side, you can see Dylan. He came in and his mom said he's been identified autistic by the doctor. We're waiting for paperwork, but we're not seeing the same concerns that she brought up. She, um, she thought he'd be very clingy to a child, um, didn't know what was going on, not things that we see. He seems like an anxious little boy, but not anything that is too unusual for a first school experience and someone who might be a little more cautious, anxious. On the right side, Joey and Cameron came from our EC program and they have done so well. We're finding that Joey doesn't need any support Whatever he was doing in EC was enough of a boost. He's very advanced in math skills, counting well beyond our expectations, really having a strong understanding of numbers and numerals and quantities. Um, we'll keep working on writing and reading to get him higher than what he is now, but even that is in advance. He can write his name. He knows most letters. He's linking letters to letter sounds. We'll get into small words and things like that, but he is certainly not someone who needs academic support during his day. And then Cameron, we found that he had been changed from uh, one or two times a week to consult only for OT and PT. We now have seen, uh, maybe it was a regression over summer. So the OT and PT have come in with some other tools. We're using triangle crayons and little pom-poms to hold in his hand because he doesn't have a hand dominance. Um, written tasks are very hard for him. And I mean, we're talking that they're appropriate tasks for a four or five-year-old in our classroom that he struggles with. We're also looking at more support for uh, his play outside. He doesn't go to new levels. He really has to motor plan his steps. So we are looking at more time instead of just a consult time. But then we looked at other children too, who came in with other concerns. Um, friends who have some poor social skills, friends that don't seem to pick up information very easily. Um, the ones who seem just a little bit lost and we're trying to figure out 
if it's lack, lack of experience or exposure, or if there is something amiss there. So we kind of talked about all of these friends in a really useful discussion. And at this time, we feel because none of the children on this list, or minus the two that have been identified, um, they don't need as much support in the classroom. So this special ed teacher is able to support when they need it and with tools that will help them through their day. The other friends, we'll wait and see what happens. So reading the article really fostered some great conversation with the special ed teacher, the classroom para, who is serving all the children, not specifically special needs children. And we'll see if we're going to need more para support, special ed para, or if we'll need more special ed teacher in there, and if some of our friends from the EC program can graduate out of the support that they came, that had been written in the IEP. So all in all, I love the article for giving us a lot of direction on where to go with some friends and what we might need to do. Just really focused on where the needs are. Another example is when I broke down the two children who had been on the checklist first, we talked about their day and where we were seeing the needs. And the light blue is astounding. There's nothing that he needs too much um, support with. He's doing really well. While the dark blue is our new to school student who is showing the needs are much higher. Again, I'm going to reiterate, early intervention is key. It does so much for them. Um, the student in light blue definitely stands out in the class and has some social things that he's working on. But it is amazing how well he does with table work when we have it. When he follows directions, he can do it. Um, there's been some modeling, but not very much or not continuous prompting for things. So he's doing really great. It was a really useful piece to look at and celebrate where he is now compared to what we thought coming in with just the IEP paperwork. Thanks for sharing today, and thanks for sharing the article with us. It really provided a great conversation.